Leah Ballard. Yes, ma'am. Please welcome Lucy Christian. And last but certainly not least, Monica Rial. Yes. There's a definite Charlie's Angels vibe happening right now. Yes. Yes. Which, can I be Bosley? Is that weird? Yeah, no, yes. no not? that's not I weird love enough. that. Yes. Well, what we do here, uh, if you guys are new to joining the uh, main stage here, the Q&A panels, I'll ask a few questions myself. Then, my wonderful friend, I'm doing it. He hates this. My wonderful friend, Dave. Give it up for Dave, everybody. Dave, 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 Dave. Dave, Dave. He hates Dave, this. Dave. Uh, he has the microphone, so then you can uh, raise your hand and we'll go to questions in the audience and get a bit interactive. But ladies, first of all, question for me. We'll start with you. Um, how are you enjoying Comic-Con Belfast so far? Oh my gosh, it's been so wonderful. This is my first time in this country. Oh wow. So, uh, I, I was saying earlier, I thought I would see, I don't know what I thought. I thought it would be a lot more sheep. I, I just assumed it would look like the movie Babe for some reason here. Um, so this is all a learning experience. I'm learning all kinds of new names and phrases. I had to learn like, what's the crack? What does that mean? So I've been very informed, so I love it. <laughs> yeah, which is an American, you, what crack? Like what's going on? It means like, what's happening, right? Yeah. 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 Can you do the accent yet? No. No. <laughs> I mean, I could try, but it's, it's a mockery. Let's not do that. <laughs> And how's today uh, and yesterday been for you? Oh, it's been so wonderful. I don't know if you know, I, I live in Houston, Texas, and it is very hot there. Yes. It's also very flat. So it is beautiful here. And I want to take home the weather badly. I love it too. Yes, it's so great. And everybody has been so kind to us. Thank you so much for coming out today. Yes. It's very kind of you. Yes, give yourselves a round of applause. Yes. Everyone I've met as well has just been so lovely. And Monica, how has Comic-Con Northern Ireland been for you? Oh my gosh, it's been fantastic. Everybody's been lovely. We've been chatting with folks. It's been awesome. We had a wonderful dinner last night. James Street on James Street. Got to meet the chef and he was like, oh, you're voice actors, what do you do? And of course we tell him and he's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. But it was super fun. And thank you guys all for coming up and talking to us and being so sweet. So we appreciate it. And if for whatever reason, if we don't get to your question while we're here, feel free to come by and see us. Yes, the ladies will be in Logan Hall. So there's a lot to see here, but make sure that you stop by and make some memories with these lovely ladies. Uh, Tia, we'll start with you. Um, how did you get into the world of anime? Oh my gosh. There, there's like three different versions of the length wise. <laughs> um, so, Long story short, when I, so a lot of the actors I work with, they love acting and then they fell into cartoons. I was the opposite. I love cartoons and fell into acting through there. Um, so, uh, gosh, it's, it's a, you know what, we've, we talked about this so long last night and I don't even know where to start. I come from a very tiny town. I graduated high school with 20 people. Where I'm from, you're either a farmer or a teacher. That's it. That's, that's what you are. You ch whatever gender <laughs> you are, that, that, des that decides your future. And um, I went and I decided to like, be different and go work for Disney. I worked at Disney World for six months doing their college program. And that's where uh, I started to explore more about what I like to do, what I enjoy. And I enjoy cartoons. So I wanted to get into them. And I came home, changed my major. I double majored in speech and communication so I could learn how to talk to people because I was super shy in theater so I could actually learn to do the job kind of that I wanted to do. Um, one thing led to another and I got an audition with Monica who gave me my first role and sprinkled my seeds everywhere to make the flowers bloom of my career. There we go. Love it. Yes. <laughs> so I'm the farmer. Yes. <laughs> and the rest is herstory, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Yes. Herstory. herstory. Lucy, how about you? How did you get into this wacky world of anime? I was a stage actor 
And um, I got an agent because I wanted to go to New York and I didn't have any money. And I was like, I just want to make enough money to go to New York. And I started booking a lot of voice work, like commercial work and um, training videos and all kinds of voice work. And I got an anime audition. I booked a tiny little job on a show called Neo Ranga a million years ago. I went and recorded it, went home and told my roommate, well, I'm super bad at that. They're never gonna have me back. I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, two weeks later, I got another invitation to read at ADV Films back in the day and I booked a lead in a show called Full Metal Panic. And I was like, what am I, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but that show led to a 20 year career in anime. And I just happened to be really well suited for this industry. So it's changed my life. Anime changed my life. Love that. How about you, Monica? Uh, same thing as Lucy, actually. We're both from Houston. And so I started out in the Houston theater community, and I thought I, too, was going to go to New York and be a real actor. And so I was very bougie, and I would only work on certain shows. I did a lot of Shakespeare. And I was in um, Cymbeline playing Imogen across from Jason Douglas, who some of you might know as Beerus and many, many, many other characters. He's fantastic. But he was like, hey, I'm doing this thing here in Houston where we dub uh, Japanese cartoons. And I was like, in Houston, Texas? I thought that was like an LA thing. He's like, no, it's here and you should audition because it's all about kids saving the world and you sound like a child. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I should thank you or hate you right now, but um, that was ADV Films and that was way back in the 90s. <laughs> So I've been doing this for a very, very long time, but as somebody, when I was growing up, I was picked on mercilessly because of my voice, right? People were like, oh, you sound like a mouse. All of these years later, I'm like, who sounds like the mouse now? Yes. <laughs> you took that mouse to the bank, see? That's right. That's my, right. my favorite thing is, is that now those people will hit me up for things for their children, and I'm like, I'll do this for your kids. Yeah. But just know, you were a jerk yeah. in high school. <laughs> Call them out. Call them out. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so, Dave, give it up for Dave, everybody. Woo! Yay. Dave. Uh, <laughs> yes, Dave. If you have a question for these lovely ladies, please just raise your hand. There's one right behind you. Thank you, sir. Hi. Uh, I asked Hi. this question uh, yesterday at the stand, but I'll ask it, you, all three of you. Has there ever been an anime character you provided the voice for that you actually didn't like? <laughs> the answer is yes, but we can never say what it is. And this is why I may not have liked it, but it's somebody's favorite thing. Oh, you mean the show? I thought yes. you meant like a character. Or a character. I thought you meant a character, right? So I meant the character? Yes. It's somebody loves that character. And I would hate for them to be like, why does Lucy hate my favorite character? She's such a jerk, yes. But sure, just like um, there are some things you prefer and some things you don't. The nice thing about our job is if you don't love the show you're in, fake it, it'll be over very soon and you'll move on to a different one, you know? Just like you guys, we have our favorite genres and different things, but our job is to do a lot of different voices. So, you know, it comes with the territory. I can't think of a character. I feel like as an actor, if I don't like the character, you guys would be able to tell. Like it would yeah. come through in the read. So I try to find something I love about that character. Now shows, that's a different story. Uh, there are certainly shows that I am like, I would never watch that again ever in my life. And when people come up and ask me about them, I'm like, oh yeah, it's great. Enjoy. <laughs> Ditto. 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 <laughs> Good, safe answer. Uh, I want to talk really quickly, we'll get some more questions in a second, about uh, the fan base and the fan interaction that you've had here in the UK, because obviously anime spans the globe. But I feel like anime fans, the ones that I've met, I've done a lot of like cosplay competitions with a lot of anime characters and, and voice actors. I feel like it's a really loyal, diehard fan base. Would you agree, Monica? Oh, 100%. 
having done this for such a long time, I started going to conventions like in the year 2000. Yeah. And I got to watch it, because back then I was like the only girl. It'd be me and dudes on stage and dudes in the audience. And slowly I watched the dudes started to bring their girlfriends. And then suddenly parents were there. And then all of a sudden girls took over. So it's been really cool to kind of watch the whole industry change. And then we've also noticed during the pandemic, it seems like people were stuck at home. So like, let's check out this anime stuff. But it's been really great to watch the fans we've had for 20 years, the fans we've had for 10 years, and the fans we've had for two months. Everybody is so diehard and so awesome. And we are very lucky in that we have some of the sweetest and just nicest fans, in, in my opinion. I might be a little biased, but y'all are awesome. <laughs> You can chime in if you want. Would you agree about them being so loyal to anime? Oh, gosh, yes, yes. Um, and it's been wonderful. Yes, I have people who I met when I first entered the business 20 years ago that still come to cons to support us and to support the shows. They run fan clubs. Yeah. They, um, I mean, it's really wonderful. A lot of people that we've known, um, we all know each other's kids. Like... Amazing. It's an amazing community. And I do agree. I think that because now we're in a day where anime is streaming so much, there is a whole new wave of fandom in young kids for shows that are not brand new, right? It's shows that have been around a long time, but a, a new generation is able to access them so easily. And that has been really wonderful to see. Yeah. It'll live forever thanks to streaming, which is That's a really right. good thing. Yes. Right. Did you want to chime in? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so funny. Yes, fans are loyal and kind, but we're fans too. So it's kind of, I don't know, it's like seeing, like, there's my people. Yeah. Um, remember, I'm from a tiny, tiny town, so nobody liked the things I liked. I mean, I was the weird one, right? Fortunately, I only had 20 people in my class, so I was also the popular one. Popular and the nerd at the same time. Um, but I used to go to like the bookstore in my tiny town and find a thing I loved, like um, Goosebumps books. And I would find a character I loved and I would just, just look at this character and just know someone out there in the world wrote this. They wrote it and for some reason it's connecting to my heart and that's, it gave me hope that there would be places where I could be understood and I could speak to the world in that very way. Before I was a voice actor, I would role play on the phone with my best friend, Mario characters, which is, which is improv, right? That's practicing. But um, lead with the characters, lead with your heart. So I feel like we're all, I don't know, I feel like we're all the same in that way and it's, it's lovely, it's lovely to see. Beautifully said. And now you're creating memories for generations to come. Very cool. We've got a question here in the middle. Hey, this is mainly from Monica. Other than Bulma, who's your favorite Dragon Ball character? I'm a little biased, but Vegeta. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing, you guys. I'm talking in the Bulma voice because I feel it's appropriate. Here's the thing about my husband. Let me give you a few details. Um, He's got the best character development, in my opinion, because he's the only guy that goes from a villain to not quite best dad, that's still Piccolo, but better dad than Goku, right? He's better than Goku. Um, and I don't know if you've seen the new movie, I won't give any spoilers, but at the end, there's a hint of something that might happen in the future that makes me very excited for him. I definitely cheered for my hubby, my anime hubby. I have to specify because I've said anime hubby so much that when people meet Sabbath, they're like, oh, you're married to Monica. And we're like, no, not in real life. <laughs> He's like my brother. But yeah, Vegeta, I would say, is my number one because he does have that character development. Although I love the addition of Beerus and Whis. I think that they're a great team and I love what they add to the story as well. Thank you. Great question. Any more questions? Just raise your hand. And don't be alarmed at that noise. There is live professional wrestling happening over there. It's not just someone following, falling continuously. It's actual wrestling. Told you there's a lot to see here, wrestling included. Oh, and congratulations to whoever just won that match. Yay. <laughs> Got a question here. Hiya. Oh, yeah. um, my question is, which shows do you have the most outtakes with? <laughs> The 
dirty ones. <laughs> Fun service. The etchy shows, I think, because I have the humor of a 12-year-old boy. So I tend to do things that make other people laugh just to kind of make it less weird. <laughs> My, I think I had the most outtakes in a very small show called Princess Tutu. It is a wonderful anime, I promise you. It was one of my, it was my first favorite show ever. But there was a time in anime, some of you will remember, when uh, a special on the DVD, an extra, would be the outtakes. And that happened on that show a lot. And they were hilarious. It was so funny. Check out that show. It's so good. Princess Tutu. It's like a dark German fairy tale. It's lovely. Oh. I've never seen it, but I've seen, I've seen it. You know what I mean? Oh, so beautiful. Um, for me, I don't have one that really stands out. I've, I've been in so many shows over so many years, and I, uh, my personality kind of gels with most of the directors, so we're, we're teasing and fooling around all the time, and the work is like, oh, that's the, like, the extra part. Everything else is, is just outtakes and being silly. So I, I like that. I like that. I'd say my favorite thing is, is whenever you have an outtake, because you get so good at matching flaps after a while. Have you ever had one where you flub and then you, like, I'll usually have a string of curse words and it just happens to match the yes. flaps? It's my favorite. <laughs> Get some more questions ready for the ladies. But a question from me. Uh, by the way, Princess Tutu is actually my drag name. So that's really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do watch RuPaul's Drag Race, but that actually does coincide with my next question. What are you guys watching and enjoying as far as when you have some time off? Uh, you know, what's on your TV? What's, what movie are you wanting to see? Because we have so many genres represented here. You know, we have Star Wars fans, Harry Potter, things like that. But what speaks to you? Oh, my gosh. Um... I don't watch TV very much. I'm kind of lame that way. I'm always busy with my hands, so I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I'm a master gardener, so I do a lot of gardening. I make and build puppets. I just like to use my hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so playing video games is something I've gotten into recently. I've jumped into playing Red Dead Redemption, and oh my gosh, my life has changed. <laughs> um, I don't really get into like the D and D fairy, like the fantasy stuff. So walking into the Wild West with the same idea, it was just like, oh, I get it, I get it now. Yeah. So I'm obsessed right now with Red Dead and Luigi's Mansion Three. <laughs> Red Dead is a beautiful game, like cinematically speaking, isn't oh my it gorgeous? Gosh. Yeah. Amazing. It's really good. I am watching, I'm watching Outlander, <laughs> and I'm watching, um, I play a lot of Mario Kart with my kids, um, and we play, there's a My Hero game called uh, One's Justice, My Hero One's Justice, we, we play that a lot, um, but yeah, for me, I watch like Grey's Anatomy and Gilmore Girls and stuff Yay. like that, that's what I watch. I am kind of like Tia in that for the longest time I didn't watch a lot of television or movies, not because I didn't like them, just because I was always busy with other things. And then the pandemic happened and I had no choice but to watch TV and movies. And I became a huge MCU nerd. Um, I had never given superhero movies a chance and my husband was like, I think you should check this out. You should watch it. And then a little show called WandaVision came along and I fell in love with those characters, so then I had to go back and watch everything else. I'm a huge Robert Downey Jr. fan, so of course Iron Man was on that list like 10 times over. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now I'm a huge MCU nerd, and I kind of want to get into the books. Like, now I kind of want to get into the comics and see how they differ. So if you guys have any recommendations, please let me know. Yes. Favorite MCU character, would it be Iron Man? Oh, gosh. We did Hard, a right? crossover back in the day of Witchblade into anime, and so now I'm like, dear Marvel, <laughs> you wanna get in touch with Japan and make some anime? What can I do to facilitate that? <laughs> We'd be into that, for sure. We've got a uh, question right here in the middle. Hi, Ed. Um, what, would, like, what would you say is your most favorite character to voice and why? Most favorite and why? 
So I'm really bad at picking. Like seriously, if you ask me, do I want pizza or hamburgers for dinner? I'm gonna say, why not both? Um, so I can't really pick a favorite character because they're kind of like all your babies. It's a lot of babies, but they're all your babies. Uh, but vocally, the ones that are the most fun for me are the ones that don't sound like me at all. So of course, like Suyu Wasui sounds nothing like my natural voice, so that's a lot of fun to do. Um, if you've seen Black Clover, I get to play Mara Leona Vermillion, and she's way down in here. So anytime I have a voice that doesn't sound like me, those are the ones that I enjoy the most. Yes, that is true. That is true. Um, I don't play a lot of villains. So whenever I get to play a villain, it really stands out. So like Medusa in Soul Eater was very fun for me. But probably my favorite, because she is an extension of me, is Nami in One Piece. Um, yeah, I've gotten to be with her for almost 15 years, and that is so rare. Um, I feel like I've grown up playing that role, and she's kind of got it all. I've gotten to laugh and cry and scream, and she's great. I started watching One Piece the other day. I watched six episodes. <laughs> You're and then I was like, there. I'm done, right? <laughs> Just a few more There's to go. There's only 12, right? Um, for me, it changes all the time. It, it depends on what I'm going through. Uh, a lot of playing a character also comes through what I'm going through in the moment in my life. I re really enjoyed playing Zero Two in Darling in the Franks. She, uh, she feels like a monster and she feels unlovable. And I think that's something we can all relate to on a different levels. So that character really, really spoke to my heart. Um, and the director was on board, and he, and he loved the experience. So the overall just experience of being in that world for that time in my life was just, it was essential and, and wonderful. And that's kind of it. It changes every season, um, but it depends on what I'm going through and what exciting projects are in the works at the same time. Great question. Thank Good you. Good question. Thank, yes. thank you. Just raise your hand if you have a question. We've got one up here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, uh, back to what you said, Monica, about Black Clover. I have to ask, um, what was your favorite moment of like voicing a certain scene as Marleona or as Nero? Oh, gosh. Um, so Black Clover was fun for me, period, because I started out as Nero the bird, right? So I would go in once every three weeks and go, kah, 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 and that was it. It was awesome. And then all of a sudden, uh, the director was like, hey, I've got this character that yells. You like to yell as Bulma. Would you like to yell as kind of like a Vegeta-esque character? And I'm like, yeah, bring it to me. Um, so Mara Leona came along, and then like two weeks later, he goes, hey, I need another audition. I was like, for what? He's like, for Black Clover. And I'm like, why? And he goes, so the bird. So I actually had to audition to make sure they would sound different. But some of my favorite scenes, Sekra has some really great scenes that are very sentimental, which those are beautiful. But what I love Mara Leona is she's just a fireball. She just comes in there and wrecks everyone. But my favorite scene was when she got to fight Yami because I got to fight Chris Sabat. And she would have kicked his butt if he hadn't left in the middle of the fight. And I got a little upset. <laughs> I saw Chris and I was like, you chickened out, man. He's like, what are you talking about? It's like I was so close to beating you up finally after all of these years of Dragon Ball. I just wanted to land one hit. That's all I wanted. But yeah, that was a special moment just because I got to fight Chris a little bit. Love that one. We have time for probably a couple more questions, so raise your hand if you have a question. I have a fangirl question for you ladies. So obviously in your travels and comic cons and events, I'm sure you've met a lot of celebrities. We love to hear about fangirl moments because I'm a fan, we're all fans here. Who's the celebrity that you've met and freaked out over or someone that you'd like to meet that you would just die? I met Carrie Elwes from oh The Princess God. Bride yeah. and was like, I couldn't speak. I, I was just, <laughs> you know? and he was so dear and wonderful. And I made my agent go talk to his agent so I could go get in his line. Oh, and love that. 
really quickly for those Stranger Things fans, he's also in a movie called The Princess Bride, but he's also in Stranger Things. Yes. I met a fan that was like, yeah, the guy, I'm like, no, 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 he's from The Princess Bride, but. He's also in, yeah. He's done a lot. I think, well, if Robert Downey Jr. ever showed up at a con, I'm dying, period. Like, you would see me dead on the floor. Um, But I'm a little older, and when I was 12 years old, this movie came out called The Lost Boys. That was Monica's awakening. I was like, oh, sexy vampires? Tell me more. So a few years ago, I found out that our agents actually have Jason Patrick, who played Michael, and Kiefer Sutherland, whom I just adore all for everything. And I happened to mention that I was a fan of The Lost Boys. So of course they went out of their way to embarrass me. And so I'm signing, and my agent Gilbert goes, Amon. And I look up and Jason Patrick is like right in front of me, and I'm just, uh, well, hello. And then we went to dinner that night, and I'm just talking to Brittany Karbowski, and all of a sudden there's a hand on my shoulder, and I turn around, and he goes, hi, I'm Kiefer Sutherland. And I went, I know. I would have died. Jack Bauer. He's the nicest guy, too. And by the end of the night, he's like, you, me, video games, we're going to do it. And I'm like, "Uh wow. I couldn't even talk, just squeaking. I just love to hear that because when celebrities such as yourselves meet celebrities, it's very cool. Kind of, it feels validating, you know? How about you, Tia? What about you, Tia? Oh my gosh, I, I, I usually don't geek out about celebrities. Um, I have a few that I would love to meet, but I will tell you a brief story about when I met my favorite anime voice actor before I was a, a voice actor. Um, it was Caitlin Glass. And my favorite show in the world, anime, is Gunslinger Girl. And uh, I'm a huge fan of Triella in Gunslinger Girl. And it's just this awesome character. She's great. And even before I knew, even before I watched that show, I saw her on a wall scroll. I didn't even know what a wall scroll was. But I thought this character was so beautiful. There's something about her that connected my heart to her heart. It was the first anime I watched, and I fell in love with it. Anyway, after Monica gave me my start, I got called into audition, and my audition was for Caitlin, who plays Triella. And I thought, what a perfect way to become her best friend than to casual cosplay as this character I love. (laughs) And so I had, Triella has long blonde pigtails, so I got fake clip-in extensions. And I had long blonde pigtails, and I looked all cute, and I was like, we're going to be best friends. This will work so bad. Um, <laughs> so I go in to do my audition, and it, it's, it's great or whatever. And as I'm walking out, she goes, by the way, I love your hair. And something about that triggered me. And I freaked out, and I was like, yeah, I'm casual cosplaying Triella from Gunslinger Girl. You play her. This is actually not even my real hair. I mean, it's real. Like, obviously it's real, and I bought it, so it is mine. Let me show you how this works. And I cl- unclip my extension, and I'm, like, wagging it in her face. And I realized maybe I made a misstep somewhere. <laughs> but she ended up casting me as a nerdy blonde scientist with pigtails, so it worked. Um, but yeah. <laughs> that is adorable. That is some successful fangirling right there. I love that story. We've got a question here in the middle. Hello. Um, Hello. A bit of an off the record question, but a lot of fans have been waiting for Bleach for 10 years, and I'm just wondering if any of you have been approached, or has there been any news on the dump for the new uh, last arc of the Bleach anime? They are a California dub, um, so I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I haven't heard anything about it through the grapevine, but that does not mean anything. Um, also, it may seem like we would be in the know on stuff like that, but I am here to tell you, the actors are usually the last people to know when stuff is coming. It is very true. It's very true. It's like. When you love something, you're going to know everything about it. You're going to know when it's coming out or whatever. 
So the fans are the ones that know before we do. Most of the times, it's fans telling me what's about to come out because I'm on, I'm focused on my own obsessions. I'm I'm more concerned with Mario, and and when the Mario anime is gonna drop. So <laughs> so you guys are usually the one that tells us like, oh, my hero's coming out. This is what we can expect. This is when that type of stuff. Yeah, and a lot of times what that looks like is we don't know anything until we get a phone call that says, hey, we're going to start doing season six of My Hero. We need you for X number of hours. And that's how we know that we're starting, <laughs> you know, that it's time. Yes. Any more questions for our lovely anime panel? We have time for maybe one or two. There's one right there. And then we'll take you and that you'll be our final one. No pressure. So this isn't really a question, but you were talking there about how much you appreciate your fans and how it's brought everyone together. But I just want to say from all of us here, thank you, because you have provided a platform and shows and anime it's brought all of us together. If you look around here, there's so many different types of people and just thank you. That is so kind. Thank you. That yeah. is wonderful to hear. Seriously, thank you guys, because I, I say this all the time, but I mean it truly from the bottom of my heart. We get to do something that we love, but we wouldn't get to do this if it weren't for you all and your support of the industry and your support of us. So thank you guys, because without you, we would just be actors doing nothing. <laughs> no, that was lovely. Yes, it was beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Yes, it was. Uh, we're going to do a final question from this lovely, sorry, Dave, just right here. Our final question is going to be here, and then the ladies are going to head back into Logan Hall, where you'll get a chance to get one-on-one -on -one with them uh, for autographs and photos. Um, so out of all of the animes that you've been in, um, other than the characters that you played, who would you have liked to voice act and why? Like, who would we like to voice again? Or um, Out of all the other characters except the ones you've voiced. Oh, them. like any character at all in anime? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I would say, because I would never be cast, Sanji from One Piece because he's hot and I love him. Um, I'm going to say, so when Naruto came out, uh, Sakura, I really was like, oh, that's my cup of tea right there. She's a little crazy. I could totally get into that. Then I went to LA, so I would love to play soccer. Although the voice actress did a phenomenal job. I don't anyway want to steal her job. She did wonderful, but that character was kind of cool. I have so many. Um, <laughs> I wish I was, I was um, in uh, Attack on Titan, because I think it's amazing. Um, but Trina is amazing, so I don't want to take her job, but I love that character. Um, but if we did My Hero again, because I'm Ochako and I'm Recovery Girl in My Hero, but I love Toga. Oh, me too. <laughs> ah, Toga. I would love to be evil if, because I play such a good girl. Ochako is such a good girl. It would be great to play such a bad girl. It would be so much fun. Good to be bad, right? I good could to be bad. totally be bad. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Great question. Guys, thank you so much for your awesome, insightful questions for our amazing thank panel you, here. Thank you. Yes, any final words for your fans before we go? You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. We're going to be at our tables. I think we have lunch. I'm not sure. But if we're not there, just hover around. We'll be back. <laughs> yes, we'll be over there very soon. Yes. Do not you. miss thank your opportunity you. to meet these lovely ladies. Give it up one more time for Tia, Lucy, and Monica. Your amazing anime panel here at Comic-Con Northern Ireland.